Welcome. In this video, we'll be looking at the basic conduit skills required to fabricate this piece of 20mm galvanized steel conduit. This includes a double set from a 90 degree bend and finishing with a running coupler. Firstly, we need to measure how much conduit we're going to need. Well, one meter 60 seems to be enough, but I'm gonna give myself an extra 10 centimeters to work with. When cutting, place the mark fairly close to the vise. Keeping the blade at right angles to the pipe, allow the blade to work right through the cut. When pulling multiple bends into a length, you need to start from one end and work towards the other. But I'm going to start with the double set, so I need to know its dimensions. My set needs to extend from this wall to the bottom of this 20mm hole, so let's measure the depth. My double set wants to move naturally around the obstacle, so I need to consider its starting point and the overall length of the set. Okay, let's get to work on the bending machine. Measuring from inside the bending machine, the first measurement I need is at least 20 centimeters clearance. So I'm going to give myself 27 centimeters. I'm going to mark the pipe where I want the first bend to start. Move the conduit so that the mark sits inside the former at the point where the conduit will start to bend. Place one hand on the pipe and the other on the handle, then pull down for the bend. Remember, the more bend you put into the pipe, then the shorter the width of the set will be for the same depth. Using an off-cutter conduit or wall, we now need to mark the conduit for our next bend that's gonna give us the depth of the set that we're looking for. Remember also to check that we've placed enough bend in the pipe so that we can get the set completed within the length we want. With the second bend point marked, place the measured end into conduit bender. Now it's important to check that the first bend is in line with the former. This will ensure that both bends are in line with each other when bent and it won't be kicking off to the left or the right. With the conduit in line and the bending mark in the right place, bend the conduit to about the same amount as the first bend. 
A small amount of pressure on the handle will help keep the pipe steady in the former whilst you move around the bender, trying to ensure your bends are going to be parallel with each other. Looking down the end of the conduit, check to see that your bends are parallel and in line. Minor adjustments can be made, making sure you're working on the bend and not on the straight pipe, by bouncing in and out on the bend to bring the two bends into parallel, or by leaning and bouncing on the sets to bring the two sets in line. Check that the depth of the set is correct by measurement, or if you can, try it out in position. Now the double set is complete, I can reset my 20cm clearance mark. This mark will eventually become the end of coupler, but I'm not going to cut that just yet because we have another bend to do and there may be some movement. Now we need a 90 degree bend here, measured from the end of the coupler. Remember, this is the end of coupler, back of bend measurement, so therefore you have to take it from the end of coupler mark and not from the end of the actual conduit. Carefully mark your back of bend measurement on the conduit. Here I usually mark what would be the top of the pipe when it's the correct way round in the bending machine to make sure that I bend my 90 degree in the right direction. Once again, carefully lining up the double set with the former will ensure that both bends will be in line with each other. With the measured end inside the bending machine, position the pipe so that the back of bend mark is within the former. When your bend is complete, it will sit in the former like this. So to make sure the back of your bend hits your back of bend mark, take a short off cut and place it in the former in the finished position making sure that its outside edge sits on your mark and at right angles to it. With the final check to make sure that the double set is still in line, begin your bend. It is far better not to overbend your conduit, so put in the majority of the bend and then gently bring it up to the mark. Now with both bends in place, I can finally mark my end of coupler cut. You can of course mark this in position if it's easier. The mark of course is end of coupler and not for my cut. So using a coupler, I placed it on my mark, I've marked the pipe where my thread for the coupler needs to end. Use a hacksaw to score the end of thread mark so it won't be lost. Then simply cut in the middle between the two marks. Make sure your cut is nice and square. This will help when threading. Now 
Now it's time for threading the conduit. Make sure that the conduit is well lubricated and that your stocks, guides and dies are clean. Making sure that the pipe vise is tight and with one foot on the bending machine, lean the dies into the pipe using the full leverage of the handles and turn in a clockwise direction. Once the dies have started cutting the thread, you can relax a bit and just rotate them. Add three or four threads at a time, keeping the pipe and the dies free from swarf and well lubricated. As you can see, the hacksaw score mark marking the end of the thread remains clearly visible. You should aim to thread up to just before this mark. Three more half turns should be enough. It is of course very important to deburr the inside of the conduit to avoid damage to the cables. Finally, tighten the coupler up to the mark. Well, that fits a treat. My problem is on the other end, where I'm gonna be unable to turn the conduit into the angle box. I'm gonna to have to use a running coupler. A running coupler works like this. On the existing piece of work we would have a half coupler thread and on the new piece of work we need a longer thread that can hold a lock ring and a coupler. Lock ring goes on first and the coupler up behind. We then offer the new piece of work up to the existing half coupler thread and then run the coupler from one onto the other and bring the lock ring up behind to tighten it up. Unfortunately, the angle boss doesn't come with a half coupler male thread, so I'm gonna to have to use a nipple. Luckily, here's one I made earlier. From the back of the bend, my end of thread cut will be at the end of the nipple. My running coupler thread needs to be the length of the coupler plus a lock ring for the end. Mark and cut the thread in the same way as before. Then add the lock ring and the coupler. It helps to loosen the fixings on both pieces of conduit when joining the running coupler together. Tighten up the coupler, 
and then the lock ring to get a nice secure fix in. You'll need to paint the exposed thread with galvanizing paint to help prevent corrosion. And finally, tighten everything up. Well, that's just some of the skills required for working with store conduit. We hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.